you know, for me, just like a personal experience, a couple of weeks ago, um, I missed two penalties in, in a game, which is something that's not very common to happen. And um, yeah, there was a lot of a lot of messages just came from that. And um, you know, like I said, after reading some of those messages, you you forget all the positive messages that I've received in the in the few weeks before that. So. Um, yeah, that's when I took the decision to actually delete the app off my phone and say I'm just going to take some time away from it. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Matthew Chow and I'm Chief Mental Health Officer at TELUS Health. I have the privilege and honour of interviewing Ryan Gold from the Vancouver Whitecaps Football Club today. Thank you so much Ryan for joining me today. Um, I'm going to start off by asking you what mental health means to you. Um, you know, mental health is something that um, kind of dictates your whole your whole life. Um, your mental well-being um, it plays into how how you treat everyday life, and um, yeah, just trying to be in the best place you can be mentally um, to just enjoy life. Yeah. So that's interesting to hear from you as a as a high level professional athlete. You know. The, you know, one of the best in the world at what you do, you know, I would have thought, you know, physical strength, dexterity, speed, those would be things that would be like super, super important to you. So why, why, you know, it's the, the importance of mental health? Um, I think they're, they're important in, in our field of work, um, obviously to get the best out of us uh, in training and, and in games, but um, there's so much more to life than, than football. So, um, you know, I think, being able to to be at peace with yourself and be in a good place mentally is is uh, the most important thing. Yeah. You know, I'll I'll zone in on two things that you mentioned, you know, there's life outside of football. That's that's <laughs> yeah. that's that's I think uh, a a key insight. Um and then that dealing with these things mentally is so important. Um tell me tell me a little bit about um how you support your mental well-being and, and mental health. Um, I mean, I, I don't do too much. Uh, thankfully, I've got uh, my family and my, my fiance around me to always, you know, make sure I'm in, I'm in a good place. And then, you know, whenever things are kind of overwhelming me a little bit, I've, uh, I've got a couple of dogs that I like to go and go out for a walk with and uh, just kind of clear my mind. So um, it's just kind of little things that I do to, um, to keep on top of things. Yeah. Um. You know, so as a mental health doctor, I can tell you that those little things are so important, right? So mental health is sometimes about, you know, getting support. Sometimes it's about getting therapies. You know, sometimes it's about getting professional help. But the day-to-day -day of mental health is like just what you talked about, your family, your dogs, um, your fiancé, you know, having a life outside of your work. Those things are just as important for, uh, for, for mental health. So I, I recall you actually left home pretty young to participate, you know, in this high-level sport. So can you tell me a little bit about what that experience was like? Uh, yeah, so I initially moved out of my, my parents' home at 15 um, just to move, like, 45 minutes down the road um, to play football there. And then that, that wasn't so bad because I still got home at the weekends. So, you know, I still got all my washing done by my mum on the weekends. Um, and then, yeah, when I turned 18, uh, the opportunity came to move to Portugal. Um, so I went there by myself, which was, it, that was really tough to begin with. You know, the first, the first few months, I would say it was, it was really tough. But, um, you know, thankfully with the, um, all the apps and stuff we've got, like Zoom and, and Skype, you know, it, it made that a little bit easier just to keep in touch with everyone and, um, you know, whenever things were getting tough, I always had someone to speak to. Um, but yeah, getting those first few months out of the way was, was difficult. You know, and since they were physically apart, I would imagine like digital technology played a pretty important role. You mentioned like different apps, Zoom and things like that. Yeah. So, so I, I would imagine you like, you're on the phone a lot, video chatting, you know, messaging and stuff. Yeah. Every, every night for like three or four hours, just on, uh, wow. yeah. just on FaceTime and stuff, just. Because um, to begin with, I was staying at the training ground. I uh, didn't have a car, so, you know, training would finish, and then 
it was kind of like my day was finished. So that was um, that was huge in terms of just passing time and getting through to the next day, and then um, just you know battling through it until until things kind of become more regular. Yeah, you know I think it's really important that you talked about like how much time you'd actually spend interacting with your your family and your fiance when you were away because like three to four hours you know people often when they're on their phone they're like 30 seconds here a minute here watching a video there for you to actually dedicate that kind of time to, to yeah and also families. and also to them for because yeah. they had their normal lives back at home for them to to dedicate those you know that time in the evening was was huge for me and i think it played you know a huge part in, in being able to settle down there that's that's awesome um and I'm so glad that you're you're you have such a great connection with your family. Um, so there's also sometimes like not such a great side of, the, of 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 digital, which is you know some of the impacts that social media, for example, have had had on 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 folks in terms of their mental health. There's been some very high profile athletes that have spoke spoken publicly about the eff- effects of social media on them. What do you what do you think about about social media? Yeah, I mean, obviously. It- it's got its pros, social media, but I'm not I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, it's, in one hand, it's nice that everyone gets the platform to to speak their mind, but you know when people use that in the wrong way, it, it can be hurtful and it can be it can be really tough for for a lot of people to deal with. And you know, obviously, with foot, not just football players, any kind of sports players or um, celebrities that are you know in the spotlight. Um, you know they can be reached just via message um, at any time of the day, which is um, it's one of the downsides of it to me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's why I'm not not huge on it. Yeah, yeah, not a, not a big fan of yeah. of social media. So here's a little like psychological tidbit. It turns out that how human beings are are made up in terms of our psychology that when we see something negative, it hurts us twice as much as when we see something positive. Like it's a two to one ratio. So you, you basically need to see two positive things um, to make up for one negative thing that you might see okay. on, on social media or, or read in the paper or, or what have you, right? So it kind of <laughs> yeah, I mean, lends credence to your, yeah, your thoughts I, about this. I could, I could probably rattle off at least 10 negative messages I've received in the last maybe two or three weeks and I could maybe only tell you one or two of the positive ones. So there's just proof that yeah, you, you even know, remember the yeah, negative ones. You remember better, the right? negative ones, but not so much the positive. Right. And so you're someone that is, you know, at the top of your field. And even in your case, you find that it's it's so much easier to remember the negative stuff than the positive stuff. So I guess that's why you've chosen to just no, not, not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, especially. Stay away from that. You know, for me, just like a personal experience a couple of weeks ago, um, I missed two penalties in, in a game, which is something that's not very common to happen and um yeah there's a lot of a lot of messages just came from that and um you know like i said after reading some of those messages you you forget all the positive messages that i've received in the in the few weeks before that so um yeah that's when i took the decision to actually delete the app off my phone and say i'm just gonna take some time away from it yeah so you're the second person that I've talked to from the team today that has said that they deleted social media from the phone. And so there's, <laughs> there's a bit of a trend. Um, I can tell you as a doctor, I've actually prescribed that to people sometimes. I've told them like, you know what, just delete the yeah. apps off your phone because they're just, you're doom scrolling. You're spending so much time, you know, on, on negative stuff. And so even for people that are not as high profile as you, you know, just looking at negative news all the time, you know, that two to one ratio thing comes up again, yeah. right? Like you just focus on the negative stuff and then you completely, you know, blow away all the positive, even for, for a high level professional, like, like yourself. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's not just the, the, like you say, it's not just the messages we receive personally. It's, um, you know, I know this from my fiance saying like everything that comes up is all about people with perfect bodies, perfect lives and real life's not like that you know it's uh uh it's a different world for everyone and um i think social media kind of shows the bad side of that yeah i think your fiance has a very important message there right that um it's not life is not perfect yeah. life is not always you know bliss it's not always good stuff um life has ups and ups and downs yeah absolutely 
but uh, online sometimes only the positive stuff might be reflected in people's like Instagram profiles and stuff, and you you'll forget about the the not so stuff, not you know the rough stuff that yeah. people are going through. So speak speaking of that, you know, a lot of being a professional athlete is getting through the day to day, right? Because there's the glamour, there's the glory, and then there's sometimes the grind. So can you tell me a little bit about you know, how do you get through the day to day, like the, the professional aspect of professional sport? Um, I think, you know, coming, being in the situation we're in now in this locker room is really easy in the day to day because we've got such a good group of people around us. Um, not just the players, you know, the, all the staff, the, the medical staff, coaching staff, um, you know, everyone in the buildings makes it a really easy place to come to. So um, I think this has been one of the, the easier periods for myself mm. to, um, you know, to feel motivated in the morning, um, to come into training, to work hard, uh, you know, like my my time in Portugal, um, you know, when I first went there, obviously not speaking a word of the language, and um, there was a, a little bit of anxiety, like every sing every time I was in the the locker room with the guys, um, wondering if they're speaking about me, what they're saying, um, that kind of stuff was playing on my mind, so. That was a that was a tougher period as a professional, um, being in that in that situation. But you know, thankfully here we've got such a a good group that, um, you know, I feel like I'm in a good place. Yeah, well, I think it's a real tribute to the Whitecaps organization, the type of environment that they built here. Even for myself personally, professionally, coming into this locker room, coming into this this training facility, um, have felt welcome. Like just yeah. there's a spirit of generosity in all the f the folks here you know, in the front, um, the front desk, uh, you know, the tr training staff, the coaching staff, just everybody, the players, um, just have been just so, uh, amazing. And I'm glad to hear that you feel that way yeah, too, definitely. that this has been a, a, a positive part of your professional life. Um, you know, again, I am just amazed and, and humbled to hear you talk about your experience in Portugal, where you're going to a locker room, you don't speak the language, you're worried, yeah. like, are they talking about me? Where they, so did you ever find out, like, where they, you know, what were they talking about? I, 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 I was actually probably. too scared to ask, because <laughs> <Too scared laughs> being in the, in the room with, like, older guys and really experienced guys that have done a lot in football, and I was just, a you know, an 18-year-old kid who, um, I didn't really know my place, so I... I didn't actually pick up any of the phrases. Now that I speak the language, I I, uh, I don't remember what they were saying, but I'd like to go back and, you know, kind of listen in uh, <laughs> if I could. But. <laughs> yeah, go back to and find out what they were talking about. And now you're a leader yourself, right? So what an amazing transition to go from that, you know, 18-year-old in that locker room, different country, different language, to where you are, you know, today. Yeah, I think... You know those experiences that I've went through have kind of helped me become the the person around the around the club that I am. Um, you know I'm always someone who's who's up for a laugh. So you know just trying to raise everyone's spirits every day has kind of been a big part for me. Yeah, I'll bet it it also adds to your credibility as a leader too, right? Because uh, you know when you talk about these topics, you're you're talking about it with some authority because you've been there, you've experienced that. Yeah, it's, having those experiences, you know, in the last 10 years is definitely, it's, like I said, it's helped kind of form who I am today. And I would, I would hope that, you know, some of the younger boys, when I'm, when I'm speaking to them, they know that I've, I've been through some, you know, pretty good experiences and I've uh, been in a lot of different locker rooms in my time. So I'm speaking from um, experience in the past and um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully they listen. So that's, you know, that's a really neat leadership quality, I'd call that, right? Taking personal accountability. So that's something I see in mental health a lot too. It's like sometimes people, you know, they're, they're struggling and then they start blaming all the stuff around them. And I mean, let me tell you, there's a lot of social injustice and stuff in the world that, and, and there's legitimate things that people absolutely, you know, the external factors, right? But it's interesting that you also talk about that your own personal accountability, like you're accountable for your own decisions. You made up your mind that you wanted to go to Portugal. You, and yet, you know, you can still not be as, as hard on yourself, I guess. Like you're, you're hard on, you know, um, you're taking personal accountability without, um, 
without directing harm and anger at yourself. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I just I'm the kind of person I look. I always, you know, look at myself before any external factors as to why I'm in the situation I'm in or how do I, you know, improve on something, get the best out of myself. Yeah. Uh, I won't look at anything external. First, I'll always look at myself and, um, you know, see if there's anything I can, I can take out. Yeah. How do you balance that with not beating up yourself too much? Um, that's tough to say because I do beat myself up a little bit, but... Um, and you won't be the only person that yeah, does that, for um, sure. But, you know, I'm, I'm definitely the kind of guy that... Um, you know, I, I would always take on a challenge in myself. And even if I'm, I'm being hard on myself, it forces me to be, to work like twice as hard to, um, to get the best out of it. Yeah. It's like, it's your own like internal motivation. Yeah. It's your way of internally motivating yourself. Yeah. I've got just that kind of drive inside of me to, to make sure I get the best out of myself. Yeah. And you know, you know, for, for folks that are listening to this, you know, that balance of like being personally accountable and looking at yourself first and, and, and making yourself, you know, be the best that you can be is, is so important, but balancing that with like not beating up on yourself unnecessarily, not being, um, overly negative about yourself. That's a struggle that I think a lot of human beings just deal with their whole lives even. Yeah. Um, I think I've experienced it with, with a few players that I've played with, you know, making a mistake they get too hung up on it and they're, they're too harsh on themselves and it ends up affecting not just the rest of their training session or their game but the next couple of days um that you kind of that you see them so um so what do you say to a player that's going through that because I'm, I'm sure that you've you've given um, advice to people or helped people I've, i mean i've through that i've never really been i've never really given any advice on it um uh, I have been given myself just being told to, it's the old, you know, cliche, just forget about it, the next one will be better. Um, and But when you're, I know from experience, when you're the one who's been harsh on yourself, it's uh, you always think, oh, it's easy to say, just forget about it, there's more to it. But really it is just move on, um, as, like as quickly as you can. And um, from, a, from a football point of view, you know, if we do something, if I do something that's... Uh, that I was harsh on myself for. I make sure my next two or three actions are really simple just to get back into into the groove of things and then, um, you know, just try and take it from there. Yeah, that's good. Actually, that's good advice right there, right? Is to focus on the things that are within your control yeah. on something simple to get yourself back into that, into that groove. Do you think there's anything more that we can do to support, uh, well, first I'll ask, players' mental health, you know, people in sport? Um, I, I think the most the most important thing is having a a platform to not a platform sorry just having someone to speak to because mm -hmm. i think um you know if if you bottle everything up it's gonna you know inside you're gonna explode at some point so making sure you've got a place to speak someone to speak to um and just you know kind of creating that group that supportive group um around players is, is really important and what would you say about um, supporting the mental health of just folks out there, like folks outside of sport? What do you think could be done to, to help them that way? Um, I would say the same again. Just if there's pe just people to talk to, I mean, you know, it's, it's okay not to be okay. Um, obviously, there's that thing out there that mental health isn't, you know, it's easy to say to people, like, you'll be fine, get over it, or, um, but, you know, it's, it's a, it's a real problem in the world, and I think if people knew it's, it's okay to, to not be okay in, uh, mentally, it's, um, it's, there's people to speak to, there's places to go that are, you know, like yourself, that are, um, there to, to help people get back to, a hundred percent and leading a, a healthy life. Yeah. I'm glad that you're sharing that message with folks because, um, there is, there is support for people now. There is help. Um, 
and there's traditional ways to get it, there's digital ways to get it. You know, Telus Health has a lot of virtual care and digital options for people to, to get access to help whenever and wherever um, they need so that you can talk to someone, just like as you did when you were in Portugal talking to your family in Scotland using those yeah. digital tools to, to, to stay in touch. You know, we do the same thing in, uh, in mental health these days as, as well. So let's, uh, let's close, close off with, um, if there was one thing that you could tell people about mental health, what would it be? Um, what would it be? I guess, you know, if you have your mental health in a, in a good place and, um, you're, you're going to get the best out of yourself. You're going to, uh, enjoy every day that a little bit more and, uh, yeah, I think you're going to be, you're going to see the best version of yourself if um if you're more open and you talk about what you're going through um or even if you're not a talker you know like you said the the online stuff the virtual uh the virtual help um you'll see a big difference in in your day to day and um in the bigger picture you know I'm sure you'll you'll have a more enjoyable time on our planet thanks for that amazing closing message I'm Dr. Matthew Chow, Chief Mental Health Officer at TELUS Health, interviewing Ryan Gold from Vancouver Whitecaps FC. Thank you so much, Ryan, for your generosity, for, for sharing some vulnerability and, and some vulnerable moments today, um, but also for your incredible, incredible leadership and courage. Thank you. Thanks very much for having me.